Today on Leading Ladies Outdoors, we're in Bitely, Michigan at the Legends Ranch to be a part of the special youth challenge hunt. Now every year, eight special hunters are chosen to participate in the whitetail hunt of a lifetime. Now these kids all come to the table with different issues, ranging from Down syndrome and cerebral palsy to brain tumors and heart defects. We even have kids who have fought their way back from the brink of death after terrible accidents. It's our privilege today to pull up a stool alongside them in the hunting blind, and you're not going to want to miss this. Stick around. Legends Ranch, home of big bucks and even bigger hearts. One by one, these excited hunters arrive at the ranch. It's not long and the Legends Ranch is buzzing with activity. It's time to head to the shooting range. Who, Jackie, who you want to hunt with? <coughs> I want to hunt with that dude with the mustache. Anybody got a quarter? <laughs> Anybody got a dime? <laughs> Anybody got a penny? Got it, right here. With everybody proficient at the range, these young hunters are confident they'll be able to hit their deer. But now, it's time to get some shut-eye. Four o'clock in the morning comes awful early. As if the hospitality of the staff wasn't enough, these kids were about to experience the real treat. The highlight of the trip, the hunt.
one kill that big pipe. Chucky was second guessing his pick of guides about now. Dedication to innovation. One bow. The most accurate technology. One cam. When the reward is within range. One moment. A name you can rely on. One choice, Matthews. This segment is brought to you by Advanced Whitetail Hunting, Premium Food Plot, Seed, and Mineral. At 12 years old, Derek McCreary, or Chucky as he prefers to be called, was involved in a horrible accident. It was Christmas time and he was given a bike by his grandmother. He was so excited about it that he hopped on the bike, drove out into the driveway, and on into oncoming traffic. Let's catch up with his mom to find out his story. Chucky was 12 years old and a very good young man. The, the most responsible one of my children, I might add. Christmas Day came, we went to Grandma's. It was the most beautiful Christmas ever. All this beautiful food and everything and big presents and he got his bike and his brothers got their bikes and they went out to ride their bikes and in a split second, like five minutes later, his little brother came run to the door. Mama, somebody hit Chucky with the truck. So I'm running, and he's laying there, 
and he was barely alive. He was dead, pretty much. And um, she performed um, mouth to mouth. And we didn't have any equipment because she's a nurse and we're in the middle of the road. So she told my sister, my little sister, run in the house and get a turkey baster. And she revived him with a tur turkey baster. And we just seen tears coming, but he was out. And so we kept waiting and waiting and waiting. And then finally, the, because it's far away for anybody EMT to get there. And it felt like forever, but they got there. And when they did, um, they working on him immediately and everything. And then we found out we have to wait on the helicopter. We need a med flight right now. We went to the hospital on a helicopter. And um, we were there, but he wouldn't wake up. And then finally, I was like, need MRI, MRI. And they found out that... He had all five parts of his brain stem frayed, and his cerebellum messed up, and almost all the nerves detached from the nerve endings, and he'll be a vegetable or not live at all. On New Year's Eve, I remember going to pray in the chapel at the church. Can I please just see my son's eyes again, please? You know, I know he's there. You know, I know you're fixing it, but can I please just see his eyes, God? Just much better you know to see somebody's eyes and on, on New Year's Day they were open this much and he would follow me around the room with his eyes so I knew then even though I knew before from the, the machine I was like God's fixing this from then it just got better and better he had to relearn to do everything all over again and every day I pray and ask for something new. Can he please eat food? Can he please swallow and have Pepsi? He wants Pepsi, but he can't have it, please. And um, can he please, you know, sit up without this chair holding him in and certain things. And, and, and it seems like as time went on, God gave everything back. This is like better than the ultimate Disney World for this kid. He has not sat still since we've been here unless I have to make him, hey, you really have to go to sleep to get up for the hunt. He's been all over the place having fun with everybody. He's been able to hunt and not only hunt, hunt with the funniest guy here. Is remarkable, keeps me laughing. They're having a blast. He's out there fishing now. So, fishing, horseshoes, hunting, in there with the other kids. Just, I never know where he's at. It's just having fun. I'm having a blast. <laughs> this is, I like being around all the really sweet people. It's like nice to actually be able to be at a place where everybody's really polite and kind to each other. I wish the whole world was like this. I really do. Makes you never want to go away from this type of place. During this hunt, the kids are treated like royalty. With common barriers removed, they're free to cut loose and just be themselves. To leave the thoughts of hospitals and therapies and the constant reminders of what they've been through behind and just have fun.
Welcome back to Leading Ladies Outdoors. The summer between fifth and sixth grade, my father finally reached the end of his battle with pancreatic cancer, and I was 11. At that time, I just lost my, my hero, my mentor, my hunting and fishing buddy all in one day. And looking back, I now realize kind of what risk I was at. Oftentimes, fatherless boys due to divorce or abandonment, they end up in a heap headed down the wrong road with the wrong people. I'm realizing we actually have a ministry that serves that purpose now, and it's called Fathers in the Field. The Fathers in the Field program, it's a national program that we've embraced here, and, and John and Pastor Brian have, have really embraced as an outreach to the community. And we seek out single moms who have boys at home without a father in, in the picture, who believe they can benefit from mentoring. The mentor father and the field buddy and the mom, of course, uh, create an alliance for a year to spend time with each other, four times a month. Two of those times are attending during church. One time is doing community service to allow the boy to learn and understand about serving others. And then the fourth time is spending time doing something fun in God's great classroom in the outdoors. I became a mentor father because I just couldn't stand to see the young men out there that just had nothing to do. In my entire church life, I've been looking for a way to serve the church. Nothing is really a good fit for me. I'm really a pretty woodsy kind of a feller. Being able to serve in the mountains, being able to serve your community by taking a boy and maybe a friend of his is just outstanding for somebody like me. Raising Austin as a single mom was easy and fun and carefree. But then when he reached adolescence, kind of panicked. I think Ken has really taught him, first, being around a strong man and a confident man is just amazing. And so I think Austin's uh, confidence level has just gone way up. The thing that I really love most about Fathers in the Field is that it gave me a lasting friendship and I um, really bonded with my mentor and he's someone that I can go to even for anything that I need and I just, I just really enjoyed having that, that friendship, and I know that we'll be friends forever. Matt just really had a great time. Uh, every time he would go out with Mark, he would, um, he would just come home spiritually encouraged, and I could just see the change in him. It was so important to him to have that male bonding time. Just to really spend time in the Word of God and see that there are godly spiritual men uh, to know that there was going to be somebody there for him that was not going to let him down and that was just going to encourage him and be his friend. Um, it was just really amazing. What I like best about Fathers in the Field is, well, it's kind of fun to learn more about God, all the stories in the Bible and everything. And it's fun learning how to hunt, do all that stuff that you, you would never do unless you were in this. But mainly, I, I like the fishing. <laughs> I've seen Carson grow because of this program in ways most 13-year-old boys wouldn't. He's maturing into a good teenager. I can see him progressing into a, a young adult, and uh, I was a little worried about that before. This program's meant to me, and the things I've learned from Carson are you really, it takes you back to when you started to learn how to hunt and to fish. It's a good refresher, and it really kind of hits a reset button for me on it, so it's it's walking him through things he's, you know, never done, but it takes me back through things that refresh it in my mind, and it's, it's a really solid way to build it for yourself as well for him. What I've learned in Father in the Field is to trust God, never give up, never say never, and believe in yourself. I never want to be done with Fathers in the Field because it's fun. Um, you never want to leave once you're with them.
This segment has been brought to you by Legends Ranch, redefining quality one hunt at a time. LegendsRanch.com This segment is brought to you by Bear Sense. We make good sense. It's the last day of the hunt and it's time for this comedy team to sit up, pay attention, and get the job done.
he came out right in the open. The only yeah. one that came nice and close to us gave you a really good shot. You took your yeah. time and you put a really good hit on him. Good job. It's a nice eight pointer. I mean, the, it's beautiful. The, the racks are, the rack is, like even. This is a beautiful buck. Congratulations, young man. This is your first deer, right? Yes, ma'am. You did a great job. Thank Congratulations. You. Now we should probably have Skipper drag this out for you. Do you think so? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I mean, I mean, I don't want him to break their neck or anything. Yeah, we don't want to hurt him, right? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let him get the truck and get the guys to get this out, okay? Okay. <laughs> Thank you Legends Ranch and Quest Ministries for holding this special youth challenge hunt at Legends every year. Sharing the company with these kids and their families under the tender watchful eye of the Legends staff is truly a blessing for all involved. I think the come away message here is the only true disability is a bad attitude. Thank you for joining us here at Leading Ladies Outdoors and be sure to stay connected by liking us on Facebook or sign up for your chance to win a free Matthews Jewel Bowl at leadingladiesoutdoors.com. Until next week, God bless.